We're in the middle to the lower part of the Pasitos uh, Basin and so the water pressure here from the mountains roughly a thousand metres higher uh, creates a huge amount of pressure and pushes out the, the brine once you, you tap the aquifer. This is a critical component of all Salas and uh, the great thing about uh, Pasitos is it, it's got one of the highest uh, values of, of uh, brine flow of any of the Salas around uh, Argentina. The, the second thing is that um, it has good chemistry. Bill Thomas joins us now. He's the qualified person and project geologist for Recharge Resources Limited, trading on the Canadian Securities Exchange under the symbol RR. Phil, welcome. Good morning. How are you today? I'm great. Thanks for asking. Uh, Phil, let's start with an overview of the main project focus of Recharge Resources. That's a, a project called Pasitos One in Salta, Argentina. Be delighted to. Pasitos One uh, is a very, very interesting salar in that it's one of the few that has a huge amount of pressure pushing the aquifers through the salar. Um, and this is because we have three volcanoes in the northern section. Uh, they've obviously been leached by hot solutions um, when the rocks were being formed and uh, that, that hot fluids um, put the lithium into solution and it finds its way down into the closed basin. And we're in the middle to the lower part of the Pasitos uh, Basin. And so the water pressure from the mountains roughly a thousand metres higher uh, creates a huge amount of pressure and pushes out the, the brine once you, you tap the aquifer. This is a critical component of all salars. And uh, the great thing about uh, Pasitos is it, it's got one of the highest uh, values of, of uh, brine flow of any of the salars around uh, Argentina. The, the second thing is that um, it has good chemistry um, apart from high magnesium. And the high magnesium uh, was difficult to deal with up until about 219, 220. And then along came all the direct lithium extraction technologies and we've picked a um, or suggested a direct lithium extraction technology um, to go into production, which shouldn't be too far away once all the um, indicated and inferred resource and the proven and probable reserve statements are completed. And from that will flow a banking feasibility study. So Recharge are really set for a, a fast track uh, forward, um, given that they have three drill hole, um, three drill holes already completed, uh, two from the previous Explorer AIS resources and uh, their own hole. And in the next couple of days, we're hopeful we'll, uh, we'll get the um, chemistry analysis completed and um, hopefully it'll be a big green light. Mm -hmm. Sure. Okay, so now the pressurization of the Salar is important, as I understand it, because the cost of energy to flow the Salar to the extraction system is directly correlated to what native pressure is available, correct? Sort of, yeah. I, I think it's more the fact that um, the there's a couple of processes. The first process is pumping the brine out of the hole. And if it's already got a fair amount of hydrostatic pressure um, sitting in behind it, you don't have to put in as big a pumping infrastructure as you normally would. So in terms of numbers of holes. So it's a CapEx consideration. Um, but the, the, the real issue is the brine flow in the aquifers because um, at say 175 ppm of lithium, um, and using the EcoSol system uh, that they've selected, um, that would that would be roughly about 35,000 megalitres of brine a year to produce 10,000 tonnes of lithium carbonate. So if you're pumping out of a lot of wells to get that volume of brine running through the system, clearly it's going to be a major undertaking. If you only need three or four wells and you're getting you know 10,000 megalitres of brine easily out of the out of the wells, then clearly you can um, have have a much better um, system. Yeah. So the EcoSelf system uh, uses a rather judicious amount of water relative to the volume of lithium that it produces, correct? The amount of water that, that passes through is a, is, is a function of the lithium grade. So if you set up a plant for 35,000 megalitres, and your grade goes from um, 
175 to 200, then you'll produce 11,000 mega, 11,000 tons of lithium carbonate. If it drops to 125, you'll produce 8,000 tons. So it's 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 really just a function of how much brine flow with the contained value of the lithium. Sure. Is your expectation that the grade continuity of this solar is going to be approximately 175 parts per million? Yeah, we, we got 125 from um, the previous two holes uh, from two aquifers. So there's aquifers sitting at uh, 425, 363, 395 and 407. Um, so uh, if you put all those together and do a test, you get um, maybe 125, 130 ppm. From this latest hole, we've got huge flows from 363 and, um, 430, and 342 but the grade the specific gravity was much higher so we suspect that if the specific gravity is much higher we're going to get a higher higher uh, lithium value and I, I expect that's going to be the outcome right and at this point do you have a understanding in terms of the cost per ton to process lithium using the ecosolv system yeah look they, they've done a lot of work and it's coming in around 2700 a ton um which is probably in the lowest quartile. Uh, the capex is about 130 million. Um, so if you run that over a, a 25 year mine life, um, it becomes quite attractive. Um, and in fact, the, the dollars, capex dollars per ton is one of the lowest in the market at the moment. Mm -hmm. So the EcoCell system then to produce, is, is that the first stage goal then, 10,000 tons per year? Yeah, I think that's a, a reasonable amount. It generates about 760 million if you use the spot market. Um, the capex is about 130 million, so uh, everything will be paid for probably in the first quarter of production. Um, so it's not a long-term, like 10-year financing deal. It's it's quite fast. Mm -hmm. And at this point, does Recharge have any relationship with any offtake partner? Yeah, they've joined with Richlink, uh, which is uh, two big Chinese companies. One produces lithium metal and the other one is in the financing business. First phase production is targeting 10,000 tonnes per year. Uh, at, what, mm -hmm. sure. at what level do you expect to be producing commercially at full maximum capacity? It, it'll be 10,000 tonnes. Um, it, it's, a, it's a fairly quick process to put it into production because you're basically pumping water into two solvents or three solvents and uh, and the solvents take out the lithium and um, and you basically produce lithium carbonate or lithium chloride um, bag it and send it off so it's it's a it's a fast uh, process um, you know it takes literally minutes to uh, to treat the brine so you've uh, you can get a big uh, pass and flow through um, it's quite easy sure okay and this Posito's project isn't the only project that recharge is focused on no that's right they've they've got quite a few other um projects but i'm really just focused um as the qp on the on the lithium um projects that they've they've got which is uh, Positos one in argentina sure okay so on the ecosolve uh technology is that a publicly traded company no, it's not. It's privately held, um, and it's uh, it's basically held in conjunction with the University of Melbourne. Um, so they're the master licensor, if you like. Um, and then uh, EcoSolve became the global exclusive licensee. So EcoSolve can provide licenses um, because obviously we've got the geology skills and the the chemical skills, the chemical engineering skills to um, to produce plants. Okay, and so what in your opinion at this point noticed noted that this is a forward-looking statement at what point do you expect to reach a production look I, I think you've got to give it about two and a half years um, there's there's probably six months of work uh, 30 June uh, recharge have to make a decision whether they're going to buy Positos or not um, and once they've made the decision then obviously the the foot the uh, the foot's going to be on the gas to um, to go to the next stage of a proven and probable reserve statement and, and then a, a bankable feasibility study, which will probably require two production wells um, and an environmental permit, which is actually about to start. So hopefully the environmental permit, the production uh, results will all come together at the end of the year. And, uh, and then that'll be the green light to put some concrete down and start building a plant.
Mm -hmm. So that's a good point in terms of permitting. I know in Chile that the, the government has suggested there won't be any permitting of new Solar's sources for lithium due to concerns about water. Is there no such concern in Salta at this point? No, it's, it's a different um, geological environment. We're, we're down at 400 metres, uh, as I was saying. Um, in Chile, it's it, all the lithium's on the surface, so it impacts the groundwater significantly. Um, uh, we can basically tell through through chemistry which is old water uh, or which is new water. So the, the new water is uh, is groundwater and the old water, which is 15,000 years old, is, is the concentrated brine. You don't want to be pumping groundwater. Okay, so then what is the biggest risk to success in your view? Look, I, I think the, the biggest risk is, is probably um, probably a couple of risks. Uh, one is uh, finding sufficient aquifers across the 800 hectares um, that will produce the volume of brine that we want. And we think that's a pretty low risk from our, from our exploration so far. Um, it doesn't really matter about the grade. Um, and it doesn't matter about the chemistry because the EcoSolve system solves those issues. Um, and really just keeping, keeping the lithium price um, uh, above probably $20,000 a tonne um, over a longer term will give the, the company a very high MPV um, and probably pricing, pricing risk is the, is, is the key one. Um, I don't think the market's going to be flooded with lithium up until 2030. You know, there's a lot of people say they've got projects and stuff, but having put two projects together, um, there's a lot in it. Mm -hmm. All right, Phil, we're going to leave it there for now. I really appreciate your input. We will come back and check in with you in due course. Thank you for your time once again. Great. Thanks very much. You bet. Bye for now.